Hello friends, my name is Jackson Emmer and I am a touring musician from Carbondale, Colorado. Today I want to show you how to use closed position major and minor chords. So a good first step is to know all the notes on the fretboard. If you haven't learned those yet, uh, get started on that and this video will be easier. But we're going to take chords like G major, G major open chord, and G minor, an open chord, and we're going to use those same shapes to show us how to build uh, the closed position chords up the neck. So let's start with G major. You take this pattern um, and the space and interval relationship that's built into this chord shape, and you move it up two frets. You end up with your pinky on the fifth fret of the E string, your ring finger on the fourth fret of the A string, and then your pointer finger your middle finger just doesn't do anything really. Your uh, pointer finger is going to kind of uh, bar across the second fret of the G and the D strings. So if you take a look at that pattern, you can see that it's the same as this shape for open G, just you've moved the whole thing up two frets. You can also use your middle finger if you want to kind of have some extra pressure on your pointer finger as you try to bar. So, this is a movable major chord. You take this shape, you move it up two more frets, so your pinky is on the seventh fret. That's a B major chord. The root is also right here on the fourth fret of the G string. You go up one more fret to the uh, fifth, uh, fifth fret of the G string, or the, what are we at, the eighth fret of the E string. That's C. Okay, so we had G, we had A major, we had B major, we had C major, D major starts on the 10th fret. You can also take a look at open C and be, make this a movable chord, it's the same shape. So you take that chord, you put your pinky on the 5th fret of the A string, and your ring finger on the 4th fret of the D string and your pointer finger on the 2nd fret, the G string, you notice you're not even going to play the little E string, but you notice that that's the same, uh, same shape as this open C. So here's C, move it up 2 frets, that's D, move it up 2 more frets, E, 1 fret is F, so your pinky is on the 8th fret and your pointer finger is on the 5th fret. Up two more frets is G. Same chord as here. G. And so on. So that's one major chord shape that you can move anywhere on the neck. Um, now let's talk about minor. So if this is your G minor chord, pretty similar to G major, except one fret difference, right? Um, this shape is also movable. So if we move it up two frets, we've got our pinky on the fifth fret of the E string. We've got our middle finger now on the third fret of the A string. And we have our pointer finger barring the second fret of the G and D string. So all together, it sounds like that's an A minor chord. So again, you take G minor and you move it up two frets. And you make that shape two frets higher. That's A minor. Two, two more frets, so your pointer finger is on the fourth fret. And your pinky, all the way over here, is on the seventh fret of the E string. This is B minor. One more fret up. C minor, D minor. Okay. So now, let's keep going with that same idea, but we're going to use C minor. So here was C, C major, C minor. Okay. Now, if you take that same shape and you move it up two frets, so your pinky is going to play the fifth fret on the A string, your middle finger is going to play the third fret on the D string, and your pointer finger is going to play the second fret of the G string. Again, you can just leave a little E string alone. That's a D minor chord. 
right? So you take your C, C major, C minor. Now move your C minor up two frets, D minor. Take your D minor shape, move it up two frets. That's E minor. One more fret, so your pointer finger is on the fifth fret of the G string, and your pinky is on the eighth fret of the A string. That's an F minor. Two more frets, so your pinky is on the tenth fret. That's a G minor. And listen, it's the same as this chord. There you go. That's a quick overview of closed position major and minor chords. I hope that helps you and uh, helps you unlock the mandolin a little bit more and have a good time playing in some new ways, switching it up. Thanks for watching and have a good time playing.